I will be talking on uh, septic arthritis in children, yeah. right? Um, okay. Um, to start with, I think um, when we talk about septic arthritis, um, it always almost uh, being referred to as infectious type of uh, arthritis, right? Bacteria is always the main cause, while others such as uh, fungus or viral can be also the, the, the causative organism. Almost always, uh, septic arthritis will be blood-borne, and usually it involves the large joints, especially the knee and the hip. I would say that actually in children, the hip are more common to be seen, and in adult, I think the knee will be more common. And uh, in terms of demographic, it will affect mainly the young child as well as elderly. And, but last but not least, the patient that who are immunocompromised, uh, such as diabetics and those with uh, to immune disease. Okay, um, the pathophysiology. I think this picture just to show you on how the hematogenous spread coming to the to the joint. Right, um, the most common way of uh, getting septic arthritis. Sometimes we get a direct on inoculation from a penetrating trauma to the affected joint, and uh, occasionally we could also get a direct spread from adjacent bone, especially in cases of metaphyseal osteomyelitis. Right. Uh, this is just to show an example of a child who actually presented initially with a flexor tenosynovitis but end up also to have a septic arthritis of the hip and this is the most common way of uh, spreading of the infection through the, uh, through the blood supply. Okay. In terms of microbiology, all right, uh, commonly I think based on, the age, uh, based on the age you can have different types of organism but mainly you can see uh, we are getting it from the uh, gram positive type of organism for example in the neonates streptococcus is more common as the child gets older or the person gets older staphylococcus aureus start to come in um, hemophilus influenza has been used to be common previously but I think slowly being uh, eradicated following the uh, vaccination program right and uh, I think uh, the atypical organisms start to come in uh, in cases where actually patients who are IV drug abuser or patient with sickle cell anemia and uh, last but not least I think uh, nowadays people start to talk about King Gila Kike as the emerging pathogen among the pediatric population. Um, in terms of clinical presentation I think uh, being a septic arthritis, sepsis uh, infection in nature, I think the presentation will always present, patient will always present it with a pop of fever. The fever is usually of high grade te temperature. Because of that, they will also present it with chills and rigor. The patient appear lethargic. And the one of the most important clinical signs that we can see in septic arthritis will be pseudo paralysis of the affected joint. The joint is to be very painful, especially when we attempt to move the affected joint. The joint is swollen and the skin over, overlying the, the joint is also warm in nature. Okay. When we talk about diagnosis as well as investigation in septic arthritis, I would say that actually um, it should be diagnosed mainly by clinical assessment. Septic arthritis must be able to be diagnosed through clinical assessment. If you perform joint aspiration, all right, that will be diagnostic and by sending the aspirated fluid to culture, for culture and sensitivity that will be confirmatory for what type of organism that we are dealing with. On top of that, we may be able to do some form of blood investigation as well where we look for the raised total, uh, the raised white blood cell, raised in CRP, the inflammatory markers, ESR, as well as the sending the blood for culture and sensitivity. Okay, we talk about the theology, all right, uh, I think Radiograph will be the mainstay, but radiograph might not be able to tell as much, especially in the early part of the septic arthritis event. What we can see in the radiograph could be just a widening of the joint space. Ultrasound may be of helpful. MRI has been done, but I think uh, in our setup, MRI is a bit uh, difficult to get, as well, especially in children where you need to put the patient under general anesthesia. Uh, one form of investigation that pe uh, that I think nowadays people start to forget to ask is actually gram staining of the of the specimen, right? Okay. Um, based on the clinical as well as the investigation that we send, I think culture criteria is one of the uh, important criteria that we look for. Uh, initially, culture uh, give us four criteria, which mainly the temperature, the inability to bear weight 
the ESR as well as the total white blood cell count. And the prediction shows that actually if we have and each parameter will be given a point and of the if we add all together, the likelihood of the patient to have a septic arthritis is very high. And I think uh, Kate et al. Uh, modified it by adding CRP, it become another predictors, and this is called the modified uh, criteria. But having said so, if we add all the criteria, it just help us to say that actually the likelihood of um, patient to have a septic arthritis is very, very high. Okay. Okay, uh, just talk a bit on the management. I think the main state, uh, not the main state, uh, one of the important management in septic arthritis is the use of antibiotics. Mm, we may start the antibiotics as empirical, but once we get the culture and the sensitivity, we may change it to therapeutic. And I think most of us here um, have the uh, anti marker guideline uh, based on the hospital or the national needs. I think in, in Malaysia, I think this is the guideline at the moment for septic arthritis. Right, based on the uh, possible organism, uh, the cephalosporin is of choice, especially the first generation and the second generation, which is cephalosporin as well as cephaloxime. Uh, the duration is always debatable, but I think nowadays it's, it's almost agreeable that for septic arthritis, uh, the total duration of antibiotic prescription will be about three to four weeks in total. Right, um, in terms of administration, administration of antibiotics. Uh, the intravenous antibiotic will be given uh, until the patient, uh, what we call that, start to uh, improve. Mainly, they become afebrile. The very the inflammatory markers start to normalize, and then we can change it to oral antibiotics to be completed as per duration uh, by the guideline. The mainstay, I think, will still be surgical drainage. The main reason why we need to drain uh, the septic joint is because the uh, product of the white blood cells that actually uh, produce all the chemical mediators that may damage the cartilage. So we need to clear up the joint. Uh, for the large joint, like the knee, we can join the joint lavage. In the adult, we may do it arthroscopically. Uh, but I think uh, at the hip, especially in children, we may need to do an open surgical drainage and performing a hip joint arthrotomy to um, clear the affected joint. Okay. Okay, to go to an example of a case, uh, I first seen the case quite some times ago. This was actually a two-year-old boy uh, who actually was referred to our center following a history of fever and then refused to uh, walk uh, with a swollen thigh uh, but complaining of like a knee pain. Right, So you can see from this referral, um, he started with just a dry cough and uh, what you call that, uh, start to see a uh, general practitioner, but was on given medication, but uh, came to us about six days after the onset of the event. Okay, so this is the child. You can see how painful or how miserable the child is. And you can see also actually the right thigh here is swollen and actually is held in flexion, which is the position of, of, of comfort for any uh, joint uh, uh, what you call that joint pain. So I think looking at this with the joint swelling, um, pseudo paralysis, uh, as well as the uh, clinical features of inflammation over the affected side, and on top of that, patient is having a high temperature. I would say uh, there is no doubt that actually this child is having a septic arthritis of the right hip. Okay. Following which we did some blood investigation. Uh, the total white was actually 23, the ESR was 0, 0.109. We did blood culture, somehow rather the blood culture result come negative. I think from the literature, we do know actually um, the blood culture is not so sensitive. I think only up to 50% that can get a positive result from blood culture. But if we were to, to take the blood culture, it's most important that we take the blood culture during the peak of the uh, of the febrile event. Whenever patient had a spike of temperature, so that would be a good time uh, to take the blood culture. But as we saw, I think in children, it's not that easy for us to take the, the, the blood culture. Okay, um, so a radiograph, you can see actually um, the joint space um, on the right side here, uh, there's haziness as well as abnormality. But if uh, we are not um, 
familiar with this uh, type of uh, so-called radiograph, we might miss this, right? And uh, we might not actually uh, think that actually the joint is actually having some problem. Okay, uh, we sit as a patient for ultrasound, and you can see the ultrasound from the right femur, the right hip joint, there will be increase in the joint space as compared to the left side. And this is reported as well, where actually um, the uh, joint effusion is being reported. And that's where the limitation of the ultrasound, right? The ultrasound might always uh, tell us whether there is a effusion or not. We might, some may report of uh, periosteal elevation or uh, debris in the joint that's suggestive for septic arthritis. But uh, it's also mainly depends on the person who's doing the ultrasound. So at the end of the day, I will say again, all the investigation, the blood investigation, as well as the neurological investigation is an adjunct to help us to uh, diagnose septic arthritis, but the diagnosis of septic arthritis remains through clinical assessment. Okay, uh, so this is the child in the OT. Uh, the hip is in flexion FC, and we did an anterior approach for the hip joint to drain and refer straight away pass coming out from the from the hip joint. Okay, we did a joint lavage and we. Uh, Following which, I think we we uh, close the skin. Uh, nevertheless, what I've learned from this case is that uh, we started this patient with a with closed saline initially uh, because we thought actually the most common organism is still uh, Staphylococcus aureus. That's why we start with closed saline. And uh, nevertheless, two days after the first drainage. Uh, we got pus pouring out again from the hip joint and we have to go in again and clear the joint again. And uh, if you notice, the color of the pus that coming out from the affected joint here is not so yellowish. I think um, uh, that actually gives us an indication that we might not actually be dealing with the staphylococcus, the typical staphylococcus aureus where the pus usually is quite golden yellow in, each, in color. Right. And true enough, actually, when we send it for culture and sensitivity, the organism that we get is actually streptococcus pneumonia, which is sensitive to amoxicillin clavulinate and resistant to the uh, clostridium. Right. So this is a child after uh, antibiotics. After we change after the second drainage, as as um, after we change the antibiotics to amoxicillin clavulinate acid, I think by uh, almost uh, two weeks. Um, of IV antibiotics, the child starts to be available and you can see here he is more comfortable. What's so special about this child is that uh, six months before this event of septic arthritis, this child had a uh, cochlear implant implanted at his temporal bone and the cost of the cochlear implant is 60,000 ringgit and just imagine if we do not tackle the uh, septic joint uh, aggressively, it may actually you know, uh, cause problem to the to the cochlear implant. Okay, so there you are. So this is the intraoperative IR images to check the stability of the joint after we uh, what you call that um, do the drainage, and you can see the joint space here is much much reduced. And uh, this is the X-ray three months after atrotomy. Uh, again, you can see the shunter's line is broken. Most probably, this indicates some damage to the epiphysis. As we follow up this patient further, this is nine years after the drainage, and you can see um, this patient uh, in this auto long neck uh, uh, radiograph. There's a limb length discrepancy between the right lower limb to the left lower limb. I think this patient uh, last seen about uh, two years ago at the age of 12 years old, and he has about three centimeter limb length discrepancy. However, uh, the range of motion is quite acceptable. I bet there is an limited abduction, as you can see from this radiograph. And uh, we did suggest and offer the patient regarding uh, contralateral head episodesis to catch up the limb line discrepancy, or we might do a lengthening procedure if there is a need. But I think um, the patients are not ready for that uh, procedure, so he just uh, being treated with a shoe raise. Uh, this is another child presented to us with three centimeter limb line discrepancy post septic arthritis. And uh, this is from the another view when he is get older. On the right side here, you can see the Tredy Lambert, all right, following the uh, septic arthritis. And this is the outcome of the septic hip. This patient actually was referred to us from somewhere else with this type of problem where the right hip is already dislocated. Yeah, 
and uh, this is the range of motion that we have almost quite uh, acceptable and uh, this just to show you on the possible circulate of septic arthritis in a child so in the first case you can see the hip joint is actually still stable but in the second case you can see uh, the head is gone the hip and dislocated and the hip the right hip joint that is uh, is actually become un unstable in terms of management i think uh, this is a good article that everyone can read uh, it was published quite some time but i think it's still relevant and uh, when you talk about the sequelae of septic arthritis in a child, the Kyungka classification is always being referred to and uh, is, it's based on the, uh, on the uh, what you call that, the outcome of the septic arthritis itself, whether the hip is stable or the head is gone, that rendering, that making the hip joint very unstable. I think Prof Choi from Korea also modified the radiographic classification based on the uh, hip deformity. I, I think Prof Choi classification does uh, help in terms of uh, determining what type of surgical procedure or management that can be done. Right? And uh, one of the uh, procedure that can be done would be actually trochanteric arthroplasty if the greater trochanter epiphysis is, uh, is still available. We can do a virus osteotomy and put the uh, greater trochanter back into the joint and make it function like a like a like a hip joint. To be honest, I myself personally I have not done this uh, uh, procedure. Maybe the seniors like Prof Lee and the others might might help and you know advise us on on this type of procedure. Uh, another uh, late construction procedure that can be offered to this uh, type of problem in patients with septic arthritis would be the pelvic support osteotomy. Um, this is a bit complex procedure. Uh, I've only done it once uh, and I think uh, personally to say that actually if performing a pelvic support osteotomy, the outcome is quite uh, favorable to the patient as well where they get back the limb length discrepancy, the proximal femur is quite stable and they, 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 they can almost like you know functioning uh, near to a, a, a normal person function. Okay, um, the others I think what you can do it would be some sort of like a hip arthrodesis uh, if there is need to. Uh, but last but not least, I think at the end of the day, just like the patient in uh, second case, the uh, patient does not want anything to be done. All right, so I think the patient now is already 18 years old. So he managed with the limb line discrepancy that he has offered PSO, but uh, the parents, I think, and the patient himself, I think, uh, are not open to that type of procedure yet. And uh, they are happy with whatever that they, 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 they are now. Okay, so at the end of the day, I think whatever that we have from the sequelae of the septic arthritis, uh, the management will much depends on the functionality of the patient as well as what does the patient uh, want. Um, okay, uh, take home message, I think septic arthritis is always an emergency, especially in a child. The diagnosis is mainly clinical. Uh, that management includes the use of antibiotics as well as surgical drainage. Our aim, especially in the hip, is to get a joint stability and late reconstruction of the hip joint would be an option if patient uh, requires any intervention. Okay, I just want to share with everyone here from the AOA. Uh, this is our new uh, UKM Children's Hospital, right beside the current HUKM. Um, inshallah, we'll open it up by next year. We actually started uh, operating somewhere in March, but because of the pandemic of COVID-19, the hospital has been changed to manage a totally CAT4 and CAT5 uh, COVID-19 patient for almost four months. Uh, but I think hopefully by next year, we can open up this hospital. Just to share that we have the facilities of hotel here as well as convention center. So maybe if we can do something, we can invite everyone uh, from the AOA fraternities to have some form of meeting here in this new hospital. That I say thank you very much.